The only other thing I don't know if you want to see or not is my uh my kind of Zettelkast and notes section. Ooh. Oh boy, would I? It. Yeah, let's see your Zettelkast then. <laughs> Okay. Um, so this is really my, this is my take on Zettelkasten. I basically think for most people, um, all of the different setups that you see are pretty uh, far out and probably not what they need. Um, for a general person who's taking notes and wants to kind of make sense of that, I don't think they need too much. So I basically have um, anything that comes in to, uh, so anything that I'm reading, consuming, watching, I take notes on it and I use Readwise. And then all of that comes into what I call the Spark Inbox as a Spark Note. Um, so if you have a look in here, this is a book um, that I'm reading and I basically highlight sections with Readwise and then I take little, I call them breadcrumb notes. Um, mm -hmm. And they're just like a little breadcrumb to get back to where I was and kind of I I kind of look at it as like, did does something jump off the page to me, and why did I find that interesting? And that's really where I try and um I try and capture that kind of spark of inspiration. And mm -hmm. then so each morning I kind of jump in here and I just start to kind of uh, noodle around. Really, um I don't um I I hate. I hate processing. I don't kind of, even though it's called an inbox, I think there's no inbox zero here. I try, right. I treat it more as a prompt to start thinking and writing. And so I like to have as much as I can in here. Um, in Rome, I had 600 and something unprocessed notes. Um, and uh, whenever I screen shared, people were like, oh my gosh, that's giving me anxiety. But for me, <laughs> it's just like, that's just, stuff that I want to write about and it sparks that that I can I can jump into at any time and so what I do from here is I then take these spark notes and I I pick something and I then start to write atomic notes um, which is kind of uh, in Zettelkasten is like a permanent note that I'm going to keep somewhere and kind of build information on and around and uh, and so any and I keep all sorts of things from tweets to books to articles everything goes in here and then things become an atomic note so you see here uh, this must be another demo that I was doing for something new atomic note but usually I would name it something and I um I basically have um a field that relates it back to this spark note so I always can know where it kind of originated from and then once I've written the note then I have a kind of system where I, um, I, I, I kind of have atomic notes and then each atomic note is connected to a cluster note, which is basically like a bigger idea. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then each cluster note kind of has a whole lot of ideas around it and then a sequence of those notes. So uh, I can come in here. This has all of my different cluster notes and I can choose one that it's a part of. Um, so uh, it could be any of those. Let's say it's that one. And then in here, when I explore my notes, I've actually got all, I haven't even migrated all the notes yet from Rome. Mm -hmm. I'm still going. Um, but um, all of these have, like Zero Carson is the biggest, um, they all have a whole lot of sequence notes in them. Um, so that these are just all things that I've learned about Settlecasting. Hmm. And so I keep them in a sequence and whenever I have an atomic note, I try and find a place for it in the sequence. So rather than just being like, well, I'm filing this away in Zettelkasten, I really try and think through where does this fit in? Where does it fit into knowledge I already know? Hmm. Um, and I found that has helped me the most be able to connect knowledge together is like really being intentional about where does this fit in rather than like what I used to do is tag it and put it somewhere and then never look at it again. Um, and uh, and so this has been great. And so what I love about this is, um, and you can't see the sort at the moment, but I can sort this by reference, um, which I kind of like, which I never was able to do um, in Rome. Mm -hmm. um is that i can see the clusters that are building up yeah and then the ones that are not building up they kind of just you know float out to the bottom 
Um, and so I like that knowledge uh, kind of rises to the top. Um, and, and that's how I look at it is like all of these clusters are rising up. And then um, this is where a lot of the content that I write comes from. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, as I think about it, I'll come in. Um, I've got a whole note around kind of technology and is it making us numb? Um, and uh, and what I like about this is like as a writer, this is like an instant outline. So as I'm sequencing right. things, I could then come and I could write a really in-depth article about this. Um, and mm -hmm. I've already got the outline. I've already got uh, I've already got stuff in there and I've got stuff to work with and I'm not starting from a blank page every time. I'm not I'm hardly ever brainstorming anymore because I've yeah. always got inputs coming in. I'm always thinking about something. And then now I've got a great way to be able to right. um, search and find. And this was something like, like I had this same structure in, in Rome, but there was, I was always like, I can't find this thing. I'm searching through like a whole lot of nodes. Whereas like here, it's like so easy to find things. I can easily, um, I, I kind of view it in a whole lot of different ways. So this is the same, exactly the same data, but it's viewed by category. Um, so if I need to find something kind of about self-improvement or technology, I can find it easily there. So there's a whole lot of different ways that I can now view that knowledge, whereas in Rome, it was just one way. It was just clusters and anatomic notes. So this is probably one of the most joyful parts of uh, of <laughs> what, what I use Tata for. Like the projects and tasks are fine, but like actually building knowledge and being mm -hmm. able to make that knowledge useful is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And well, how would you describe the benefits of Atomic Notes in Tana? I think that... Um, one, like an atomic note could be, it, it can be one thing, right? But then it can also be connected to a whole lot of other things. And I love mm -hmm. this idea of modularity is like, you know, it, it could be connected to a number of things. And so I I found thinking and writing in atomic notes a really great way to kind of understand one concept but also understand how that can fit into so many different ways. And then there's obvious benefits as a creator because yeah. any of that can be turned into something. Um, and, uh, and, and so I think, uh, yeah, I think there's just this whole kind of joy in like just understanding things and writing and kind of not just um, kind of like, you know, I think like, sometimes you just start kind of copying and pasting quotes and, and things like that it doesn't mean anything to you. For mm -hmm. me, every time I think about something and I write an atomic note, I feel like that's me, my like embodied knowledge on the page. Right. That's how I think about it. Makes sense. I'd say also like another thing that Roman Obsidian and LogSeq users all kind of struggle with a little bit uh, coming to Tana is is mm. just this idea that the node can encapsulate like the most important information about it, right? Yeah. Like because like in those other softwares, you're often used to, um, like you might reference a node on your daily page, and then like with double brackets or whatever, and then you'd add some new details. And then the way you find that later is by looking through the backlinks. Yes. Um, whereas in Tana, I think it's a lot more natural to um, add the new information directly to the node, you know? Yeah. And that's not to say you can't have backlinks that show you yeah. like the specific context where you came up with some idea or whatever, but in a lot of cases, it just results in a cleaner and easier to use knowledge graph if you're like updating yeah. these canonical nodes more frequently, uh, as is the case with the outline that you described, where it's like now it will be easier for you to piece together an article because you have like the full important thoughts related to an atomic note, yeah. like indented underneath it. So you can just like drag and drop that around exactly right and i i think i probably think 
better in structure than I do in flexibility. So like I will have, like in my atomic notes, I think I do, uh, I'm pretty sure I do. I have like a related to. So like I find it easier for me to, and you'll see it actually, um, you'll see me reference some things in here, but that's only because I copy and pasted from Rome. Mm -hmm. um, but I, instead I like to, I, I think I feel more intentional when I write something and then I say, okay, what is this related to? And then I can think about that rather than just like double bracketing everything and be like, maybe I might need to reference that somewhere else at some other time. I, I find that hard to do. Um, I, I would much rather kind of structure my thinking in a way where I say, okay, this is like, let's find some related notes and let's um, relate those together. Right. And, yeah. and, and I'd say like one thing that I've done personally to get around that too, it, because, mm -hmm. because I agree, like I often find it helpful to like have these fields where I'm like actually trying to add labeled links between the nodes, right? Like yeah. even just a related to that's like a kind of broad label, I guess, yes. for the link um, category might be a more specific label. Um, yep. Although sometimes I do still find it valuable to just use those inline references. Absolutely. And, yeah. And you can use the links to search operator um, yes. as well, uh, which is like a system field that we have. Absolutely. It's like all caps links underscore to. And then what that'll do is it'll find all of your inline references and all of the ones that are through a field too. So yes. it'll capture both of those. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I, I think, you know, it's, I, I love kind of those little things that are just like under the hood where you're like, oh yeah, that, yeah. that is really like, it's really powerful. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I still, I still reference things. Like if it's natural to reference it, then I will um, like in line. But I right. think then that even just bringing a little bit of structure to your thinking helps you think better. And well, it does for me because I'm, I think I just am more of a like intentional, like system person. <laughs> Whereas like some people probably, you know, maybe that's not everyone's mental model um, mm -hmm. and, and they can just think, oh yeah, I'm just going to, you know, reference that. But I find it much easier to think in structure. Yeah. But not too and, much. And w one last question about this. Mm -hmm. uh, so if someone just read how to take smart notes, they might look at this and be like, wait, isn't this doesn't look like what I read a Zettelkast in to be. Don't I have to have a literature note and a permanent note and uh, uh, whatever, you know, in a fleeting note? Like, like, so how is what you're showing like a Zettelkast in? Yeah, well, I think I, um, well, okay, the first note that I ever wrote somewhere here is, um, like how do I make sense of all these different notes? Um, and so actually how I read Zettelhausen was just to try and put it, uh, I, I tried to put it into practice as I was reading it. Um, but I just felt like I there was too many notes to deal with all the time. And so I kind of took like literature note and kind of uh, maybe turn that into spark note. But yeah, so um, I kind of tried mm. to think through like, well, how is, how is it useful for me? So if I am just extremely pragmatic and I don't care about throwing things out that don't work for me. Um, and, and I, and so as I kind of, as I used it, I then just kind of built it into my own thing. Um, and, uh, and so for me, it's a Zettelkasten simply because it's just a library of knowledge that I can use. Um, and the, uh, I tried to make it kind of a little bit more simpler for what I want to use. Um, but I think that it has the essence of Zettelkast and in that um, I only look for things that inspire me and I enjoy reading. I'm looking for kind of that interest all the time. Um, and I will happily, you know, dump a book and pick another one up or dump a note and pick another one up. And then all of it is kind of really building up into this, um, in, in from the, from that, that bottoms up knowledge so that then I can then go and use it in, in, um, what I create and make online. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. And, and, and also just to add a couple more like mappings too, I'd also say that your clusters are sort of like the hub notes that yes. you might see in a 
Zettelkast and where it's like it's not just about creating like these permanent notes and their connections with each other like sometimes it's also about like giving yourself a little map like an easy way to just see them all together I think stuff. so yeah so, yeah. I mean, I when I read the book, that really the the idea that stuck in my head was the the three by five cards and like you know like like the sequence like that's really where these sequence mm. notes came from is like I actually see it as the cards kind of sitting you know uh, sitting kind of in a in a card pile there. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm. And another question is, uh, what would you say is like are like the core Tana mental models for people to pick up on? Um, so I think the day page is a big one, is just work in the day page and just mm -hmm. put everything in there. Um, I think you've then got super tags as a way to capture things. Um, so uh, just write it down, give it a super tag, and then I think you've then got searches to find things later. I think those mm -hmm. are probably the three things for me that make it... They, they seem so simple, but they make it really powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then and and then I also heard a component you said earlier, which would uh, which you might add on to this, which is just the different ways of visualizing it. Yes. You know, like yeah. you have the searches to find it, but then you also have like many searches that might even look like the same. Um, but you yeah. just have different filters or sorting or grouping just to give yourself these different views that just help get you into the mindset that you want to be in. Yeah, I think so. And they really, I think for me, it's about like the context of what I need at that time and only seeing things that I need and not things that I don't because it's easy to get distracted. And I think then it's about like viewing it in uh, in the way that you you want to to see it. So like if you need to see things in a table to make it easier to kind of see those fields and not have to click in and out of nodes, then yeah. you've got the table, you've got cards, you've got, you know, the it's just endless, endless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and what would you say is your biggest advice to new users? Uh, okay, so just start in the daily page and start writing um, and solve one problem for yourself. So if that is you want to, you know, uh, a task manager, then just do tasks. Um, if that's, you know, uh, capturing your ideas, do that. Um, so start with one thing and then um, go from there. Yeah, this was just so awesome. Thank you so much for for showing me uh no everything worries. you've everything you've got or well I'm sure this is nowhere close to everything you've got but like just talking us through some of the big ones um yeah people can of course sign up for your course uh Tana yes. Fast Track in order to see more detail get more yep. personalized help more frequent because like although I've seen you responsive in our Slack. You're probably a little bit more responsive directly to your community. Um, I try I try to be all things to all people, but, right. <laughs> but yes. Um, you know, we have been having a, a lot of fun. We, you know, have done a couple of office hours now where, you know, we just dived into people's um, uh, workspaces and built some things. So that that's kind of cool as well. And yeah, I'm, I I love it. I love being part of all, all the community, the big one and also Town of Fast Track. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, how can how can people follow you? Um, so uh, I'm most active probably on Twitter. So you can um, find me at Evelyn C, E-V-I-E-L-Y-N-C. -E um, or uh, you can go to my website, fchapman.com, and uh, you can find me in all the different ways. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, um, Rob. This is really fun. <laughs>